all right, so that's enough for tripod accessories. Now the fun begins. You're out of tape stock, just like us. Can't find it anywhere unless you're paying like, you know, quintuple the price on eBay. So what are you going to do? You've got high definition production to get done. You've got to do some editing, but first you've got to do some capturing. You don't have any tape stock. It's time to capture digitally. And to start us off on our odyssey of digital capture devices, Verge, can I get a graphic up of the Convergent Design Nano Flash Recorder, please? And, and you know what? Keep that up for a second. There it is, the Convergent Design Nano Flash. So by the end of the night, you're going to know the first name of all of these digital recorders, the list price of all these digital recorders, and something interesting about them, you know, where they come from, how they like to party. We're starting off with a Nano Flash Convergent Design device, and it records, just like its name suggests, two compact flash cards. All right, compact flash cards. What's special about the Nano Flash? Well, it's got the XDCAM EX uh, encoder that you're familiar with from the PDW F800. Very high quality uh, encoding. But on the F800, you can only encode up to 50 megabits per second. Well, Convergent Design has unthrottled this encoder, giving you the option to, to record at 280 megabits per second. So that's something like six times, six times the uh, encoded quality of the XDCAM line at 50 megabits per second. A couple other things to notice about this compact device is that it's so small, you can really mount it anywhere. It's not even a pound. Doesn't even weigh a pound. And it's got a quarter 20 thread on the back, making it perfect for Takamasan's AS7 Liebeck tripod adapting, you know, Noga arm type device, which is pretty cool. It also has some very sophisticated video processing devices. For instance, if you were coming out of a device that only had 2398, but you needed to feed a switcher that took 60i, this has pull down remover, removal. So you can take a 3 2 pull down removal and go from 24 to 60 frames per second. You can record at 24 and output 60. You can record at 60, even if you're fed 24, and still output the 60. Because it's got both HDMI and HDSDI, it also works as a converter to go between the two. Also, you can overcrank and undercrank when recording in this device. If you've got a 720p 60 signal, you can tell the convergent design to play back at 24 frames per second, even if your camera itself doesn't have that capability built into its recorder. You can rely on the, the convergent design nano flashes sort of built-in overcranking and undercranking functionality. Finally, what you should know about this convergent design nano flash is that it's chock full of interesting codecs. You can record in MXF, all right? MXF is great for Avid, it's great for Edius, it's great for Adobe. You can also record in the ProRes codecs, right? ProRes? Is that on the graphic? You can record in ProRes codecs, which is perfect for Apple's Final Cut Pro. And uh, finally, you can record in MPEG codecs. Why would you want to record, record in an MPEG codec? Maybe you were going directly to Blu-ray, right? So you record your stuff in MPEG, do your editing in MPEG, and burn it straight to a Blu-ray disc. So pretty awesome. One of the best parts, again, that I'd like to remind you about the Convergent Designs Nano Flash is its size and its weight. Super small, stick it anywhere, perfect mate for um, Takamasan's AS7 because that little stick can hold it up really well. Uh, we're going to turn to Debbie Miller now with our, uh, our first question coming in for the internet. Re zoom in real close on her. Oh. Um, let's see. It's written wants to know if this is a newer version of Nano Flash. Carlos from It's Written Productions, thanks very much for watching the show. Thanks for asking your question. Uh, Convergent Design has released a new firmware version of the Nano Flash. I don't know how recently you've updated yours, but um, a nice handy thing about a lot of these tools is that when there are new versions available, you can simply upgrade the software, uh, the firmware, if you will. There's a USB connection on the device so that you can access it. Um, pretty, pretty nifty, pretty handy there. 